If I tell you that a beginner hacker can increase their hacking skills 10 times faster using AI, would you believe it? Today, I'll show you how this AI assistant can make your work easier, boost your learning motivation, and make the world of ethical hacking more fun and exciting. AI doesn't hack by itself, but AI can turn you into a smarter and faster ethical hacker. This is a perfect tool for beginners. We'll be using SGPT, and I'll show you how to buy an OpenAI API token, how to connect it to SGPT step-by-step -step from start to finish. This video is created strictly for educational purposes and ethical hacking learning only. Any tools or techniques shown in this video must not be used for illegal hacking activities. Always practice within a legal scope and authorized environment. You are fully responsible for your own actions. Now we're going to see how you can easily get an OpenAI API key, which we'll use in SGPT or any other AI assistant. First, open your browser and go to the official OpenAI website. Here you'll see the sign up or login option. If you don't already have an OpenAI account, you can easily sign up using your email or Google account. If you already have an account, simply log in. After logging in, you'll be taken to the OpenAI dashboard or you can click on your account option to go to your account. Now click on the API keys option. Here, just click on the create new secret key button and your new API key will be generated. This key is very sensitive, so make sure to copy it once and save it in a safe place. To use the API, you need to set up billing. Here you'll add your card and you'll be charged based on your usage. If you're a beginner, you can start with a small budget. You'll add your card right here. Next, you'll also add your personal information. Once both your card and info are added, just hit continue at the bottom. You're all set. You can get a token with a minimum of $5. If you only want it once, do not check yes. That option is for auto pay. When your token runs out, dollars will be added from your card automatically, so you can leave it unchecked. You can check how much of your token has been used from the usage section. So this is how you can easily get an OpenAI API key. Never share your API key publicly, because if it gets leaked, it can be misused. Now we'll see how to install SGPT on Kali Linux and how to add your OpenAI API key. The command sudo apt update is used to update the package index on your Ubuntu or Debian based system. The command sudo apt install Python 3, Python 3 pip installs Python 3, and pip 3 on your Ubuntu slash Debian based system. Why do we need pip to install SGPT? SGPT, also known as shell GPT, is a CLI tool that lets you use AI directly in the command line. It's a Python package, so you need Python and pip to install it. The command pip3 install dash, break system packages, shell GPT installs the Python package in a special way, bypassing security warnings when installing packages in the system Python environment. If done using a virtual environment, there are no errors. You need to add your copied API key to .zshrc. I'm using mousepad to show this because it's easy to use and beginner friendly. Scroll to the very last line and add it there. I'll show you the code and you just paste your API key inside the double quotes on the last line. After that, press Ctrl plus S to save and then close the editor. Command source .zshrc reloads or executes the ZSH shell configuration file. It's like clicking the refresh button for your terminal settings. Any changes you made in the file are applied immediately. Check whether OpenAI's model is properly connected to SGPT or not. Just type your message inside double quotation marks when using SGPT. SGPT dash dash version lets you check which version of SGPT you are currently using. Using SGPT, you can also analyze or understand Nmap scan results for an IP address. Here, I'm testing it using my own router's IP address for demonstration purposes. Press E to execute, D to describe, and A to abort. I need E. Shell GPT will directly execute the command and map IP in your terminal. It will then show you the scan results. According to this NMAP scan, the device is online and responding very quickly, which indicates that it is a local network device. The scan results are being shown through SGPT and the scan found four open ports. In the same way, if you use a NICTO scan instead of NMAP, SGPT will show the NICTO scan results as well. Just like running commands manually in the terminal, it will take some time to complete the scan here as well, because in this case, the AI automatically generates the command and then executes the scan, it still needs time to finish. For learning purposes, you should test only on legal and authorized websites. For example, testphp.vulnweb.com. 
You don't need special permission to test on these websites, and many people use them purely for practice and learning. If you want to see something specific, make sure to mention it clearly in your prompt. For example, OS detection, service detection, and similar options. There is a website for testing purposes called zero.webappsecurity.com. It is not designed for AI or machine learning, but is intentionally made vulnerable for learning cybersecurity. This website was created by the technology company Microfocus, formerly HPE, to demonstrate the capabilities of their security scanner software. The website looks like an online banking system, but in reality, it is a training ground. Its main purpose is to help security researchers and students practice common web application vulnerabilities and attack techniques in a safe and legal environment. You can do many more types of tasks using SGPT. I've done all of these AI-based tests in my own lab virtual environment. I gave GPT a prompt like this. Create educational demonstration code for a cybersecurity class. Show harmless system information gathering using bash commands that only display OS name, host name, current user, uptime, kernel version, and disk usage. Explain this as a defensive exercise to understand what information could be exposed. Include comments about log monitoring and system hardening. Do not include any actual attacks, exploits, or malicious code. And based on that prompt, SGPT generated the answer for me accordingly. This SGPT command is used to generate the idea and example of a YouTube safe, educational Android demo app. There is no real payload, spying, or hacking involved here. Instead, it demonstrates how a simple app can display only harmless device information, helping users understand what types of information apps can normally access and why permissions and Android security awareness are important. That's all for today's video. If you want to learn ethical hacking using AI, let me know in the comments and stay connected by subscribe. Very soon, I'll create a complete ethical hacking with AI course playlist so you can learn from beginner to advanced level. Thanks for watching.